So in today's class, we are going to learn about collision. This is the topic. We are going to learn about collisions in today's class. Now, collisions, you must be very much aware of the term collision. Collision means when two objects collide with each other. A normal physical collision, let's say, if you have thrown a stone towards a wall, the stone is going to strike the wall. That means a collision has occurred. Very simple example once again. Let me say you are riding a bicycle and suddenly you see a big brick kind of stone, a big stone you see and suddenly your bike, bicycle strikes the stone. That means a collision has occurred. So these are quite simple collisions. I'm not going to the most of different kind of collision like say, suppose your car, you're driving in a car and suddenly your car strikes another car. That's a different kind of collision and that is also a kind of collision, example of collision. Let's proceed further. Let's go to a formal way of two objects colliding with each other. Now let's say how to describe the collision. Let's say I have two objects. This is object number one which has let's say mass m1 and I have another object which is kept on the same platform and its mass is m2. Okay. Now suppose this object is at rest. Let's say let's not, let's not move this object. Let us say it is initially at rest and this object you have given it a speed, some speed and it is moving with that uniform speed. Let's say you have given it some speed u. As this object moves further ahead, it finds that this object is here. So it's going to collide with this object. So we will say that collision has occurred as it hits the other object. Now as it hits, what will, what will happen? For a very short duration of time, for a very momentarily small amount of time, these two objects will remain in contact with each other and then they will exert forces on each other. And for that, after the small interval of time, they will again get separated and they will move with some different speed along this forward direction. So this is a very simple kind of collision when this object was stressed. Now let me change the scenario. Let me change the scenario and let me make here a different picture depicting a kind of collision between two objects. Let us say this time we have got two different objects on the same platform. This time we have an object of mass m1 and let's say I have a different object of mass m2 and let's say a spring is attached here. Now if I project this object with a speed let's say u1 and if I let this object also move with a speed u2. Now what will happen, this object goes, it finds that, suppose u1 is greater than u2. Because if u1 will not be greater than u2, collision will never occur. So it's a waste of time learning this topic. So let's, u1 is greater than u2, so that this object reaches the, this end of spring. And as it touches the spring, and you all know what is going to happen, the spring will get compressed. The spring gets compressed, it means the potential energy of spring will increase. And further, after that, the spring further reaches to its natural position and then both the object will move separately with some different speed. So what is happening, we are seeing that object goes, strikes, compresses the spring. Some of the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. This potential energy will be in the spring till the time it is compressed. That it means, it means that some of the energy which was initially in the form of kinetic energy of these two blocks is converted into the potential energy of the spring. So we get, a, we get energy conversion that is taking place. Kinetic energy is getting energy conversion that is taking place. Kinetic energy is getting converted into potential energy. Now, as the spring, now the spring will exert a force on this block and this block, the spring will try to reach its natural length. So it will again convert its potential energy and it will give its potential energy to the kinetic energy of these two blocks. So the next conversion that we are finding that will happen, again the spring will attain its initial position or let's say its initial natural length and again the potential energy that was stored in the spring will be converted into kinetic energy. And let me tell you, since no external force, let's say no external force is acting on the system and 
all the initial cardiac energy is with this system that is initial cardiac energy will be equal to final cardiac energy of the system when they again start moving with some different speeds hope you are getting the idea of the collision that is happening we are actually con con uh, we are actually conserving the energy here so what i'm writing initially they were moving with some cardiac energy and after the collision they are again attaining the same cardiac energy now this was for a general kind of collision don't worry about we will have a situation when the final cardiac energy will not be equal to initial cardiac energy we will see more kinds of collision but let me explain you up about what we have learned till now two objects again two objects we have two objects moving with different speed and they are going to collide with each other so let's study the basic collision case two objects we are having let's say this is moving with the speed u1 its mass is given as m1 and let's say we are having another object whose mass is m2 it's moving with the speed u2 and suppose they are moving along one straight line such that u1 is greater than u2 it's quite definite it's quite definite that they are going to collide they are moving along the same straight line and u1 is greater than u2 now what will happen when they are going to collide what is going to happen as they collide we all can think of a situation when they are going to collide during that duration of time during that time when they are touching each other think think like that two footballs imagine they are going to collide so as these fo footballs come together the surface on both the footballs will get deformed slightly although it's not observable by our naked eye but you think of that it's a quite deflated football as it strikes the surface gets deformed so what will be having will be having in this way somewhat in this way the deformation takes place and both the objects the during the interval they are in contact with each other they will get deformed so this is what is happening now during the instant they are in touch with each other still they are moving so during the instant they are touch with each other they are moving and they are moving together that means we will have one velocity of this both objects and they will move with a one unique velocity we got this now every object tries to acquire its original shape and size and this is the property called resilience this is a property of an object it's called resilience it tries to attain its normal shape and size you know you know if you try to uh, deform anything take a sponge if you try to deform again if you leave the deforming forces it tries to regain its original shape and size if you take a canvas ball you take a canvas ball try to deform it by holding and by exerting a force after the time you have stopped applying the force you will find that the deformation will cease to be there in the body and will this is property known as resilience i'm writing due to resilience the body will actually regain its original shape and size or let's say original structure now that means of see i told you here at this instant it is going with one unique velocity initially both the objects have some kinetic energy some kinetic energy and during the time when they were in contact with each other that means kinetic energy is lost and that kinetic energy is converted in potential energy of these two deformed objects so first we find that as you go from here to here from this situation we are having kinetic energy is getting converted into potential energy what does this signify this signify that some kinetic energy is lost and this loss in kinetic energy will appear in the form of potential energy of the system so what i'm writing this loss in kinetic energy will be equal to potential energy of the system during the deformed state so we have this we have this next what happens it tries to regain its original shape and size that is original structure so all the potential energy which was stored in these two objects will appear in the form of final kinetic energy so what will happen in the next case 